Well, welcome all you wiretappers back here in the studio of Gangland Wire. I'm here with uh, Dave Schratweiser from Philadelphia. We've had Dave on before a few years ago. I haven't talked to him for a while. And we had some interaction recently and, and I said, hey, why don't you come back on the podcast? And he most graciously uh, said, yeah, he'd like to. So welcome, Dave. Good to have you back. Gary, thanks for having me on. I had a blast the last time. I'm looking forward to this. And uh, again, thanks for the invite. All right. So you, uh, you and George Anastasia, uh, who, uh, I, you know, he, I have to thank him for something. Uh, oh, I remember how we got in contact with each other is I got a, a, an email from George Anastasia that did not look right. And I, I didn't want to reply to that. So I had Dave's phone number and I texted Dave and, and he said, yeah, he's been hacked. So, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's I told kind of really appreciated that. <laughs> I think he was already aware of it, but he was <laughs> yeah. trying to, he's still trying to track it down. I think. I have to admit that he was one of my inspirations. I did a book uh, about the uh, skimming from Las Vegas and the Kansas City mob, and I had uh, all yeah. the wiretaps and the hidden microphone audio and the transcripts from that. It's called Leaving Vegas, How FBI Wiretaps yeah. Ended Mob Domination Las Vegas Casinos. And I was looking around at other mob books to get some idea because this was going to be my first one. And uh, George had written a book in which he made extensive use of wiretaps. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And so I said, well, let's see. I bought one of those books. I said, let's see how he go. did it. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he appreciates that too. <laughs> book sales are a good thing. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Anyhow, so there's been a lot of recent activity in uh, Philadelphia. And uh, we'll talk a little bit before we get done, uh, folks. Uh, George Anastasia and Dave Stratweiser have a lot going online about the mob and particularly about the Philadelphia mob and about gang activity, motorcycle gangs and everything back in Philadelphia. And, and uh, we'll circle back to that. Uh, Dave, don't mob talk sit down .com, Gary. I don't mean to plug, but mob that, talk yeah. sit down .com. <laughs> I, that, that's what I want to do. We'll get back around maybe to, yeah. to all what you've got. You've got your own sure. podcast and uh, was it Philly prime and Philly uh, prime. Yep. So, uh, but that, uh, that, address that you just mentioned dave i think that's the main one for people to go to to find you all right yeah you can get all our all our material on there philly prime is up on google it's on apple it's on simplecast yeah. so you can get that on all those uh, outlets but uh we have a lot of fun on that show too so yeah yeah i've watched your stuff especially when you uh, back when it was on youtube a lot why i watched about all those you guys walked around underneath the bridges and, and talking yep. about the mob activities <laughs> i was just telling folks i was just telling dave i said you know you got a lot of of meet to work with back there in Philly and recent activity. We don't have that in Kansas city. They, they did yeah. the, the FBI and the KCPD intelligence unit did too good of a job back in the seventies and eighties. Yeah. There's just not yeah. much well, they're, left. They're, pretty, they're doing a pretty good job here in Philadelphia. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we're expecting another shoe to drop soon, but we'll see what happens. Uh -oh. All right, Dave. So, Tell us about that recent activity that you had. And, and most interesting was you mentioned, and, and I looked it up, is uh, they recorded another mob induction ceremony. So that's really cool. So tell, tell the folks a little bit about what's been going on out there. Sure. I'll give you the quick bullet uh, for now. We're awaiting a uh, pretrial kind of sentencing, um, I guess you want to call it hearing with the judge in this case to decide. Uh, it's a racketeering conspiracy case from the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office here in, uh, in Philadelphia. And we're awaiting a trial date. Uh, the, the indictments came out late November of 2020. Um, they locked up uh, Stephen Mazzone, who was the at one point the acting street boss here in Philadelphia. He's a capo, quasi slash underboss now. His brother, Sonny Mazzone, was also indicted, Salvatore Sonny Mazzone. And a guy who is a real up and comer here in Philadelphia, mob captain Dominic Randy, who uh, is all over the place, was kind of looked at like um, a little bit like Salvi Testa back in the Scarfo days, um, who was a young up and coming. I think they called him the prince here in town. But uh, Dominic uh, was making a lot of headway here, a real up and comer, as they like to call him. He got indicted as well, along with, I think, uh, 12 others, 15, I think, total. Um, racketeering conspiracy, conspiracy, there's some drug charges in there, gambling, loan sharking, um, the usual stuff. Uh, they locked up Mazzone, his brother, and Dominic Randy without bail at wow. the beginning. Um, they worked their way through that, uh, posted some properties, and all three of them ended up 
on uh, house arrest. Um, their restrictions have been lightened as of late. They can go to work now, uh, but they have to be back in the house at a certain time. But uh, they have some very good lawyers, and they made some good arguments with the judge, especially with the COVID situation. They don't like to keep a lot of guys in jail uh, on certain cases if they can move them to house arrest, put them on an ankle bracelet monitoring situation where you got to check in with the parole people all the time. So anyway, those three ended up um, on house arrest for a period of time. And I think back around June or so, they lightened up a little bit, let them go out to go to work, go to your lawyer's office, that kind of thing. Um, they have a protective order on all of the material in the case, including the induction ceremony. Uh, but our good friend, and I, I know you know him, Gary, uh, Jerry Capisi from New York, Gangland News, up in New York. Uh, yeah, yeah. He broke a big story a few months back. Uh, he got his hands on, uh, I'm not sure if it's the tape or the transcript, I don't even know, uh, of the induction ceremony. And it was quite compelling. And it is clearly the centerpiece of this indictment. No doubt about it. And centerpiece, I'll say this, uh, pretty much everybody who's anybody in the Philly mob, at least high ranking wise, made guys was on that tape. A few guys weren't including Joey Merlino. He was not where was at he? that ceremony and he is not on tape. Really? Well, I wonder where he was that day. He was in Florida. He was still working off huh. his last year of supervised release oh, okay. from his 2019-2018 uh, gambling conviction in New York in uh, uh, that East Coast case that was working out of, uh, out of New York City. Right. He got two years. He did a year in jail. They sent him home for a year. Then he was on house, uh, house arrest kind of supervised release, I guess you want to call it for a year. He was still working off that. He was, I think he was actually in prison when this was recorded. So he couldn't have been there. If he wasn't, he was in Florida, not allowed to be associated with those guys. So he was not at the ceremony. A couple other guys weren't, but significantly, according to Jerry's story, uh, Mike Lancelotti, who is the acting street boss here in Philadelphia, one of Merlino's uh, closest buddies and closest allies, uh, uh, according to Capisi and according to the document he has, was the uh, person conducting the induct induction ceremony. Uh, Joe Legambi, who is the, was the boss here from 2000, 2001 to 2018, 2019, had an interesting 20-year run here in Philadelphia, was allegedly also there. Uh, a bunch of other guys, top-ranking guys, John Changlini, George Borghese, I mentioned Stephen Mazzone. He was also at the ceremony, but it was conducted, according to Jerry's story and from the transcript he has, by uh, Mike Lancelotti. Uh, interestingly, Joe Legambi, the boss, kind of when he introduced the guys after the induction ceremony to everybody in the room, he kind of gave a little synopsis of who the individual was. Um, but this, this tape is, as I said, the centerpiece, and it's going to be uh, quite an interesting uh, you know, few moments in the courtroom when they play that. Oh my uh, God. If, they, if they play, I think a lot of guys are going to plead in this case. The lower level guys are going to plead. Yeah. I think right now the upper level guys, I would say maybe the top four or five that might actually go to trial, but that's going to get played. If they do, uh, you're going to hear their voices. And for a few of these guys, it's not good. Uh, especially Stephen Mazzone. Interestingly, Mike Lancelotti is not under indictment. In this case, neither is John Changlini, George Borghese, or Joe Lacampi. But Steve Mazzone is on tape. So is Dominic Grandy. And they're at that induction ceremony. So that's not good for them, obviously, when you have a tape like that. It's tough to, you know, the tapes don't lie, as George Anastasia likes to say. And it's tough to cross-examine a tape. Yeah. So when, when this goes to trial, um, if it goes to trial, and I believe it will, for at least a few of these guys, um, it's going to be an interesting day in court and it'd be interesting to see how the defendants react sitting at the table when that does happen and how the jury takes it. Uh, because like I said, it's a tape and it's, uh, kind of well-documented. And as Jerry pointed out in his story, um, I don't like it when a New York guy scoops a Philly guy, but Jerry's a good buddy of ours. <laughs> yeah. So just like you, Gar, so, you know, if you scoop <laughs> us in our own backyard, we give, you, we give you your props, and then we go from there. But I, I got to give Jerry uh, credit there. Uh, there was a lot of heat about that. Um, that was before there was a protective order. And once that happened and that got out, that story, the feds went back into court, and the judge gave them a protective order. So all of the discovery in this case has kind of been under lock and key. 
only for the defendants and their lawyers. They're not allowed to copy it. They're not allowed to show it to anybody else. They're not allowed to give the contents of it to anybody else. So, uh, but it's an interesting case. Um, as I said, gambling, loan sharking is in there. There's some drug stuff in there involving uh, Dominic Grandy. Uh, and there's some interesting tapes on that that uh, are going to be problematic for him. But for, the good news for him, Gary, is he's represented by uh, Brian McMonigle, who is one of the top lawyers in the right. country, defense attorneys, represented Bill Cosby, uh, Meek Mill, a few other guys like that. He's a very, very, very good defense attorney who was a former assistant DA here in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So he's one of the lawyers in the case. The lawyer for Steve Mazzone, the, uh, who was the acting underboss at the time, is John Maringolo and Lou Busico. Lou is a big Bucks County, Philadelphia defense attorney, has handled some mob cases before, uh, has been Steve's attorney before in cases. John Maringolo, some of you may remember, um, handled some big cases involving the Lucchese crime family in New York. He was also Joey Merlino's lawyer in that New York case a few years back, which ended in a hung jury and a mistrial. And then Joey pled to a two-year sentence for gambling. But John is a very, very good lawyer out of New York. Uh, I think he's also a professor at Pace University, teaches law there. Um, but he's sharp, really good. He's represented some cops in New York and gotten them off cases, corruption cases. He's represented a lot of big mob figures in New York, Gambino crime family, Lucchese crime family, I think some Genovese mm -hmm. crime fam uh, family folks. So there's going to be some good defense attorneys sitting at the other table across from the assistant U.S. attorney. So that's kind of a synopsis of what uh, happened in last November. It's working its way through right now. Next week, we hope to hear at it. We hope this this hearing that's been put off three times because of COVID and other rules and, and things with the judge. Uh, in terms of scheduling, because they don't like to have a lot of different juries or hearings going on in the federal courthouse at one time. Uh, so they've been keeping that kind of limited. But hopefully if that goes next week, we might actually get a trial date, which I don't expect to be until 2022. Uh, you know, just out of speculation, and what, what do you think about this? Would, uh, would maybe any greater powers come into play here and uh, maybe even in a national mob that to try to keep that tape out of court because the way I've researched this, anytime you get audio under title three in order for it to ever be released legally, it has to have been played in court or in some public venue, you know, under yeah. legal and otherwise you can't get it. They destroy it. Actually they'll destroy the audio unless yeah. somebody cabbages onto a copy and, and keeps it hidden in their desk. They'll destroy all that. Uh, yeah. and, and if you remember, like Paul Castellano was trying to get those tapes with uh, Angelo Rosario, right. to, and he was going to find out that, that they had been dealing drugs, and they mm -hmm. fought like hell to keep those tapes out of his hands. Will yeah. the mob as a greater organization maybe fight like hell to keep this tape from being played in public? Because once it's played in court, it's going to hit every uh, media outlet in the United States. Yeah. Now, I haven't heard it. And I haven't heard it, I should say, and I haven't seen a full transcript of it. So I can't say that there's any other implications for any other mafia or mob families yeah. across the area. Um, I will make it very clear, though, Joey Merlino is not on that tape. He's uh, alleged to be still the boss of the mob, even though he lives in Boca Raton in Florida. Uh, he was just up here this summer for a 10 day. We can talk about that for a little bit in a, in a bit. But Joey is not on tape. In fact, two of the guys who got inducted at this ceremony and just so you know how it was tape recorded, there was a, a mob informant, oh. a mate guy, wearing a wire at the ceremony. Um, that's, that's different. Because, that, that may yeah, not be under Title Three. then. It's not a hidden well, microphone. Could, there was one yeah. party that knew it was yeah. being taped. So that's different than the Title Three. No, he was wearing a wire at the ceremony. Okay. Um, and uh, he wore a wire for a, a lot. This case has hundreds of hours of audio and video wow. tapes. Hundreds. And they're all recorded by this one individual who was a maid guy uh, already out of the Newark, North Jersey area uh, in the family, but they kind of brought him down here and brought him in the fold. And then I, I don't want to call it a reinduction ceremony, but the powers that be here wanted to have an induction ceremony. He was there and he was recording it. Huh. Um, and he's with another guy. And at the end, the other guy says to him, Hey, how come that guy from down South isn't here? Meaning Merlino. Yeah. And, and one of the guys says, because he's smart. 
<laughs> well, at the, end, at the end of the day, just having been caught on tape, he looks damn smart here. Let me tell you yeah. that. He, damn he wasn't smart. Here, he wasn't here for the ceremony. Um, this was in October 2015, by the way. Wow. Uh, so the feds have had this guy recording people for quite a long period of time, years. They have a lot of tapes, video, audio, uh, that kind of stuff. But this tape, it's just not good for anybody who was there and, and who was actually on tape. Right. Because at some point, as you well know, if the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office can build a case with a couple of predicate acts, charge some crimes, yeah. that tape puts you into a racketeering conspiracy, right. makes you part of an organization, uh, in their minds, a corrupt criminal organization. Uh, the mob guys like to say is uh, uh, to us all the time that it's not a crime to join an organization. <laughs> it's only if you commit a crime in furtherance of that organization yeah. that you get in trouble. They would argue that they do not do that or they haven't done that in this case. But I will tell you right now, that induction ceremony could come back to haunt a lot of people. And as I said, a lot of guys, top guys, are not under indictment in this case. There is another ongoing investigation here in Philadelphia, which George and I have talked about on our show all the time, Mob Talk Sit Down. Um, and we've talked about it quite a bit of time. There is definitely another ongoing investigation here. Do we see a superseding indictment that brings the rest of the guys in? I don't know the answer to that. Do we see a separate indictment? I don't know the answer to that. Um, there's another investigation going on uh, in Philadelphia. Uh, Anthony Nicodemo, who was a mob soldier here in Philadelphia, uh, who was involved in a mob hit and pled guilty uh, back in 2012. He's been in jail for eight or nine years already. He's doing 25 years to 30. 25 to 30 in that range in state prison. Um, there was a raid on his father's house in South Philadelphia uh, a few months back in the spring, a uh, gambling kind of loan sharking um, investigation. State police, FBI raided his house, took phones, computers, allegedly took some very copious notes on some loan sharking operations and things like that. There's been some uh, reports that this might have been uh, a father-son thing. Nobody's been charged at this point. There are absolutely no criminal charges against Anthony Nicodemo, who is in prison, or his father in this case, or anybody else who might have been involved in that. So again, that's an open investigation. No charges have been filed against anybody in the case. That could also come into play here. So we're kind of waiting for another shoe to drop here, possibly. It has not dropped. We thought it might over the summer, June or July. It did not. We're now in September, clearly, and we're going to get a hearing hopefully next week. Uh, and at that hearing, we'll see if anything new comes out, if they get a trial date and, you know, if there's any other arguments about discovery and things like that that we haven't heard or seen at this point and possibly about that induction ceremony. But right now, we don't know kind of what's on the table until they actually have the hearing. Yeah, those lawyers, uh, they'll be instructed to fight like hell to keep that induction ceremony from coming in. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, it may be more prejudicial than uh, probative, as we say, in the legal business. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it, it may be more prejudicial than actually have any evidence that they committed any particular crimes that are alleged. And that's, uh, that's where they have to have a RICO statute involved here to prove that this was an organization. Otherwise, I'm not sure if, uh, if it's yeah. going to be relevant and they may be able to keep it out. That will be number one on the defense list, I'm sure, is to yeah. keep that ceremony out of in front of the jury. And like I said, I think the lower level guys that are in this, the associates, guys who were involved, they'll probably end up at some point taking a plea. Yeah. Uh, do I see all of those guys going to trial? At this point, I, I, I would say probably not. Um, the lawyers really aren't commenting on that right now. And like I said, a lot of this stuff is under a protective order, meaning they can't divulge yeah. information about discovery and things like that. So it's difficult to, you know, even have a conversation other than when's the hearing, what's going to go on at the yeah. hearing. If they file a motion, we get our hands on the motion and report on that. We've done that a few times yeah. uh, in this case already, but uh, this is potentially a very explosive case here. Uh, if it gets expanded, it would be even more explosive. Uh, if there's a secondary indictment here, we'll see where that goes. Um, if you talk to the guys and the guys who aren't under, under indictment, they'll be more than happy to tell you they're not doing anything criminal. And in fact, they're going out of their way not to do anything criminal. Uh, Joey Merlino, 
Uh, Gareth, you want to talk about that? It was just up here at the Jersey yeah, Shore. Yeah. Let's let's talk about Skinny Joe. He's he's sure. kind of a, a he's kind of the mob star from uh, back yeah. east anymore. He, you know, ever since John Gotti died, why Skinny Joe yep. Molino seems to be the mob star back east. Yeah, go when, ahead. He, when he was on trial in New York, he was on the front page of the New York papers. Uh, <laughs> I know he's got it all. He's got those movie star looks. Uh, you know, he, he, he dresses well, he's smooth and, and he, you know, he talks to newspaper people a little bit or reporters oh, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and including, uh, he, yeah, <laughs> including you, he's got it all. So let's talk about skinny Joe, what he's up. Well, to. you know, he's the big, uh, he's the big, um, multimedia star, Instagram, <laughs> yeah, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, he's all <laughs> over the place. And everybody who has a mob website, like we do. <laughs> likes to put him up there because he draws instant attention. There's no yes. doubt about it. Yep. Uh, I, I've known the guy since 1994 uh, when he came home from prison on a, a, a parole violation after he'd served some time in a armored car robbery. Um, and he's quite the colorful fellow, uh, not afraid to talk to the media. I mean, the answers are short, you know, five, six word answers, yeah. that kind of thing, not a voluminous kind of conversation or anything like that. But Joey has been out of prison. Um, on and off for the last mm, almost 10 years. And uh, I've been down in Florida, in Boca Raton. I actually went down when I was with Fox in Philadelphia. I went down and uh, followed him around for a couple of days, tried to get an interview with him. Uh, he actually was getting on a plane to go to Las Vegas or Los Angeles, Los Angeles when we were there. So we didn't get to have a, a, any kind of a sit-down kind of conversation with the guy. But um, he's back in Florida. Uh, he's doing everything legit, uh, kept his nose real clean during his supervised release. He's now uninhibited. He can meet with whoever he wants to meet with. He can associate with whoever he wants to associate with. When you're on supervised release, you can't do that. Right. But now that he's off, he got off July 27th, uh, came up here to the Jersey shore to Margate, Ventnor, uh, Longport area, right along the Jersey shore here in uh, South Jersey. Mm. And, um, kept it pretty low key. Uh, Went to some nice restaurants at night with the guys. Uh, I'm told it was a, a no camera event at those outings. Nobody was allowed to break out a cell phone camera and take pictures. He didn't want his picture <laughs> plastered all over it. And no selfies that, with Skinny Joe. Yeah, <laughs> the reason for that is probably in 2016 when he came up here, uh, my partner and I from Fox, uh, we took a little trip to the Jersey Shore and Joey was <laughs> driving up and down Atlantic Avenue in Margate and Longport in a white convertible Rolls Royce. I remember is, that. Yeah. You've probably seen that video. Yeah. Anybody who follows Merlino has seen that video multiple yeah. times. And <laughs> we had a field day with that. We kind of had him on tape for about a half an hour. I mean, we were right behind him. We got shots actually in the rear view mirror of him kind of <laughs> hanging his hand out the window with his shades on <laughs> with, the, with the top down. Yeah. Um, cool. <laughs> so, and, and that tape has been all over the place for three years now, since 2016, <laughs> the last five years. But, uh, Joey has been relatively quiet. He was up here. I'm not privy to everything he did while he was up here. Uh, there were no big headlines while he was here. I don't believe anybody got him on tape, meaning videotape or pictures of him while he was here. Mm. And he went back to Florida. So uh, his entrance and his exit kind of quiet. I don't know what went on in between. Uh, but as one of the guys said to me after he left, no big deal. Mm. He came, no big deal. And we'll see if that's actually what happened while he was here, but you know, he did, and he is able to sit down with the guys who are in his inner circle and anybody who knows anything about Joey Merlino, his circle is his boyhood friends who wow. he grew up on the same corner with. And that would be George Borghese, Steve Mazzone, Marty Angelina. He didn't grow up with John, John Changlini in the same neighborhood, but they were, they've been tight for years. Joey's like 58, 59 right now. John's a little older. Um, but those guys have been a very tight knit circle for years. And it's always been the presumption that in order to crack the top echelon of those guys in the Philly mob, they're going to need an insider to turn state's witness or become a cooperator. Uh, to our knowledge, that has not happened. Uh, the other mob soldier who was wearing a wire at the induction ceremony got a few of these guys on tape here and there. Uh, we have not seen any charges against anybody and no one else has been charged. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that induction ceremony kind of is the corner piece, cornerstone for what could come. Uh, if they get those guys involved in crimes, they play that tape. It shows that there's an organization. It shows that the pro if they can see the proceeds from 
any kind of criminal activity going up the chain, uh, you know, that kind of thing, that's going to be, you know, it's called kicking up here in Philadelphia. Yeah, it's probably yeah. called the same around the country. Yeah. And it's actually a tape with Dominic Grandy talking to the undercover, or I should say the cooperating witness saying, kicking up. That's what I do. I do it every week. You got to make sure everything goes up. The other term that's on a couple of tapes is touch and base. Always got to touch base with touch and base with your capo, your capo regime. You got to let him know what you're doing. Uh, in fact, there's a tape in there where uh, one of the guys is actually chastising one of the other guys. Hey, you got to make sure you touch base with your guy, with your skipper, and make sure he knows what you're up to down here and who you're doing it with and why you're doing it and who you're dealing with in the Philly mob. So those kind of things are on tape. We know that. Um, and, and those are going to be some crazy hours in a courtroom when, it, when that stuff gets played. Uh, and like you said, we haven't seen it publicly. It hasn't been played anywhere yet other than Jerry Capisi having some excerpts from it and reporting on that. Uh, we have not seen a full transcript and we haven't heard the tape at this point. Yeah, they could even they could get one of those guys even on another phone call somewhere else to Joy Molino or even talking about kicking up to Joy Molino and, and bring and draw him into a, a Rico uh, yeah. without him even touching any of it, being slick and staying clear out of state and, and never touching anything. But they, one of those guys that Brits drawn in on, drawn in on, especially the induction ceremony tape with that language, he could have that same language somewhere else unrelated and they could, yeah. they could bang him into it. Wow. I got, I got to say this, Joey has been very careful. Uh, the last five or six years. He has a very good attorney, Ed Jacobs out of Atlantic City, and John Maringolo, who I mentioned earlier, who is representing Steve Mazzone here. In this case, Ed Jacobs is not in this case. I don't know if he would get in the case if Joey got indicted. Uh, so far, we see no indication of that happening. Um, I can't say that it won't happen, uh, but there's no charges against him now. He will be the first one to tell you he's not doing anything criminal. And from folks I know who have interacted with him, he even gets a spidey sense on the back of his neck that somebody's wearing a wire or somebody could be wearing a yeah. wire in, on his conversations. He's out. He's checking out of that conversation quickly. Mm. So the, the word on the street is he's being extremely careful uh, about what he's doing. Now, am I talking to the FBI about this? No, I'm not. Are they talking to us? No, they're not. Squad one here in Philadelphia is a very tight knit group yeah. run by Mike Breslin who was the head of the Banano crime family uh, squad up in New York. He's a former assistant U S attorney and he headed the Banano crime family uh, squad up in New York. Now he's the head of squad one, they call it down here, the mob squad, but mostly squad one. And he runs a very tight ship. Nobody talks. There's no information coming and going from that group at all. Everything's everything that we get is from a public document or something that's been filed in court or some type of, uh, authorized law enforcement activity, which is a new term kind of they're using around here lately. Instead of no commenting when a raid or a search warrant is executed in public yeah. at somebody's house or business or whatever, um, they, they don't, they used to say no comment. We don't comment on uh, potential investigations yeah. or ongoing, ongoing. investigations. Yeah. Now, now they say we can confirm we were at that location conducting court authorized Law enforcement activity. Yeah. <laughs> the 2021 term. 2021 term. That means, they had, a, that means they had a search warrant. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> they just didn't go up and wave a piece of paper and say, you know, I got a search warrant here. I'm coming in. Let me, I'm coming in and searching. <laughs> yeah. And they have been using those, by the way. They have in the past uh, six months or so. There have been some search warrants. There have been some subpoenas. Yeah. They have gone out and spoken to people. But again, Nobody's charged outside the group I talked about in the original indictment in November of last year. Uh, no one else has been charged. No other uh, allegations of criminal activity have come out. And if you talk to the guys, they'll tell you that's because we're not doing anything. Hmm. Interesting. Illegal. <laughs> yeah, they don't do that anymore. Uh, no. But, uh, well, all right. Dave, this has been great. Uh, real good, great update on uh, Philadelphia activities. And, and we're really looking forward to that uh, tape coming out because like we were discussing before, uh, yeah. folks, if you've ever 
seen a transcript like Angelo Leonardo. Uh, I had it on my uh, one of my blog pieces, guys. Uh, uh, you might go back and look. Uh, he told about his mob induction ceremony in the same way uh, Michael D. Leonardo, when I interviewed him, told about his mob induction ceremony. And, and that's why it's interesting that uh, in D. Leonardo, he, Gotti was the mob that was the family boss. That was after right. Castellano was killed. And he mm -hmm. had uh, his underboss, uh, Sammy the Bull, conduct that ceremony because John Gotti Jr. was going to be inducted. And he thought it didn't look good if he inducted his own son. Yeah. Uh, but it was the underboss that did it. In this case, it wasn't, what, uh, like you said, uh, I can't remember the guy's name that conducted, that ran the ceremony, but that's a really important guy when you give that kind of responsibility to somebody. Yeah, so. Michael Lancelotti, he's the, he was alleged to be the acting street boss introduced by Joey at several yeah. uh parties and things like this as, as the guy who's running the street operation yeah, he's, Alleg allegedly again he's not charged here and he in fact he's never been charged never. Yeah. oh really so, yeah. I, I would say he is position. he is the underboss in, in that world he was kind of the next guy under joy merlino even though other people may have turn you know like titles and all that when he allowed mm -hmm. him to run that ceremony i would say yeah he was a boss and all these ceremonies are exactly the same uh, for, and it'll be interesting to see when this one comes out, but just like on TV, you know, they do talk about, you know, Omerta and, and have burn a card in her hand and maybe prick yeah. her finger. And then afterwards they sit them down and, or maybe they join arms or hands and, and, and say something in Sicilian. And then they explain the rules to them. And I'll bet this yeah, is well, going to be exactly like that. Well, that's exactly how Jerry described it. They all stood around in a circle holding hands yeah. at the end. Kind of thing. What they didn't know is one of the guys they were holding hands with was Mark Wire. <laughs> I'm which, still blown you know, away by that. <laughs> uh, Gary, you know as well as I do, that's the most embarrassing moment you can have as a mobster, that you oh. invited a guy into your right. you know, den yeah. and, and let him tape a ceremony. Uh, it's only happened a few times, yeah. and uh, it, it's never good when it happens because yeah. that just sits there as a potential, you know, racketeering conspiracy charge yeah. down the road. If they could prove that guys that are not under indictment were kicking money back to guys who were at that ceremony, that's a problem. Yeah, and and nice. that's what we're watching for here. So far, there's been no proof that that happened. Um, so it, it'll be interesting to see kind of how this develops down the road. If it does come out, Gary, we'll have another episode to come back and talk to you about. Be oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we maybe play a little bit of the tape on that. That'll be cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you, you know, listen, the, the I'm US... tipping my hat to Jerry Capisi again. <laughs> really? It was, it, was a nice, it was a nice get by him. <laughs> Jerry has hundreds of uh, sources up and down the East Coast, including in Philadelphia yeah. and a lot in New York, obviously, because that's where he's based. Well, um, he, he must. But, I'm yeah. telling and you, listen, I know. He, he gave me a courtesy and, and called me before he dropped it and said, yeah. I got a pretty interesting piece you might want to see tomorrow. I didn't get into the details, but check it out. And he yeah. was very, uh, very gracious about it, uh, not gloating or anything like that. Yeah. But the, he just called me to give me a little heads up that something was coming that he, I probably should look at. So, oh, yeah. I, you know, I, everybody I, did. I yeah. spent about 12, 14 years in that world and, and with yeah. U.S. attorney and FBI agents and and to get that kind of information from somebody, you had uh, he had to have a real deep throat source. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but all done one one hand. Never because, identify. <laughs> right. But on the other hand, sometimes they'll leak a little tidbit like that out because they they want to build a little uh, uh, press uh, to to for the, before they spring the brig case out there, you want to kind of get a little interest. Or, they're, or, they're, or they're tickling a wire, Gary. Tickling the wire, up, yeah, you know, yeah, tickling the wire. They're oh, up God. on some <laughs> recordings and they're recording a few people and they want them to start talking about it. Yeah. So they drop, they drop a few things. So, you, know, the, you, you guys out there that don't understand tickling the wire, uh, here's a good example of it. There, we had some wires up on in a drug operation, and I and I wasn't even in intelligence. I had a, a SWAT team that we served all the search warrants, and so they said, "Okay, now you guys go to this house, this house, and this house, and you run up and act like you're going to serve a search warrant. You don't really have one, but you run up and act like you're going to serve a search warrant. Then you go to this house, you do the same thing, and and my guys are going." 
what the hell? I said, you know, they're trying to get them to then call each other on the wire and talk about, hey, the cops are over here. Now the cops are over there. Oh, oh, I get it. That's tickling the wire, trying to stir some kind of conversation. So, yeah, it could be that, too. Yeah, exactly. And I got to tell you, you know, when they, I, I said they before that they've executed a bunch of search warrants and subpoenas and stuff like that in the last six months, uh, every time they do, my phone starts to light up. And, <laughs> and, it, and it's, it's usually some of the guys or an underling call them and say, what's, what are they doing over there? How come they're that guy? That's, <laughs> that search warrant? What are they doing? Are they arrested? Who got arrested? You know, that kind of thing. And that starts them talking. And yeah, believe yeah. me, if they're up on a wire, they're catching all that conversation. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I haven't gotten any letters from the feds telling me that my voice was captured on any <laughs> recordings, but I, I've gotten them in the past, but not, yeah, uh, yeah. not, not in this go around at least anyway. And, and folks, that's another thing that Dave just mentioned. If you're ever on a telephone or a hidden microphone and they pick up your voice and you're identified in a title three investigation, when it's over, then they generate a letter. U.S. attorney generates a letter and sends it out to you and says, your voice was overheard. They don't tell you any more. I don't really think uh, best I remember other than your voice. Uh, well, they usually get 30 to 60 days, I think, to, to send you that letter and tell you. Yeah, uh, they don't know. They don't necessarily tell you what the contents of the conversation right, right. I, i'm sure if you press them uh if, if it's not anything criminal i'm yeah. sure you could you know find out what exactly it was but uh it's never fun to get one of those letters because you then your mind starts to go <laughs> where, what were they listening for what were they listening to why were they listening to my conversation really kind of what did i say oh from. my god what did i say it's going to come yeah. out in public <laughs> i can imagine all right, I like Dave. to run up to the door thing, though, Gary. That's a nice trick. They wouldn't do that. <laughs> These days, that would get you in trouble. Hey, oh, I know. Trick. I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, this was this was 1990s. This is the 80s or 90s, I guess, during the middle of the cocaine yeah. wars. You had you, the leases were off on a lot of policemen during the yeah. height of the crack wars. Yeah. It was, uh, <laughs> I had to yeah. tell my guys once, I said, okay, now, guys be careful. I said, you got to, we got a Fed working with us. And I realized that he's a good guy. And, and, and everybody gives you a lot of license, do whatever you want in these crack houses. But just remember, he's a fed. <laughs> we don't want to go too far. Okay, boss. <laughs> no, sir. Follow the rules. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Dave, once once again, uh, plug what you got out there so folks can can find you guys. Because I tell you what, there's, uh, there's a lot of mob information out there. And you guys have the most accurate and the best I'd say out of any single city and the most uh, really recent activity. Uh, so well, appreciate uh, the compliments. Listen, I'm very fortunate to work with a great partner, two great partners. Uh, George Anastasia has written almost a dozen, over a dozen books. Uh, I, I believe 10 or 11 of them are about organized crime and the mob uh, and some really good ones. If you haven't read his stuff, even if you go on our website, mobtalksitdown.com and you go to the bio section, George's books are all listed there. Uh, he writes for a bunch of publications. He's a, he teaches at Rowan University. He is a true expert on organized crime. So between my 45 years reporting and George's 40 plus years of reporting and all the sources yeah. he has, and I can't leave out my partner, Brian Zeli, who is our camera guy for Mob Talk Sit Down, the videos that we have on our website. Um, he's been with me for 20 years. Uh, started actually with him uh, coming up this week on 9-11. Um, we were actually at ground zero mm. or approaching ground zero when the second tower came down. Uh, and we worked together for the past 20 years. And he's the guy shooting all the great video of all the mobsters on the cover stuff we do, including that video of Merlino yeah. driving in the, in the white Rolls Royce. But, uh, we're a nice, uh, a nice team. We're on mob talk, Also, I do a podcast every week or almost every week called Philly prime. It's on, uh, you can look it up on Apple, you can get it on Google, you can get it on Simplecast, wildfirepodcast.com is the group that I record them with. Um, and it's also on our website at mobtalksitdown.com. Just go down to Philly Prime, all the episodes are there. I think there's 50 something podcasts on there. So uh, Gary, I appreciate you having me on. I appreciate okay. letting you get in a little plug there. Um, we are expecting some activity. So I think things will pick up now that the summer's kind of, winding down past labor day here so uh i'm expecting a busy uh fall season how about i say that all right that's great all right dave nice talking to you good talking to you gary right. thanks for the invite again okay bye